So, thank you very much. So, I will <coughs> present some uh, results that we have with about the statistical properties of DNA in various. Uh, it, again, yeah. This one. Okay, thank you. <laughs> yeah, so otherwise the moon just yeah. shakes like this. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so thank you very much to the organizer and uh, 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 yeah, yeah, it's coming. So thank you, and um, all the people here. So I'm sorry that I could not follow the first three days of this conference with, uh, I suppose, beautiful talks and and uh, and so I, I will present uh, what we did on, on DNA and so first for a, a physicist why uh, uh, DNA and why it is interesting for polymer physics you see here three possible way of seeing the DNA uh, uh, and uh, three different parameters one is the length scale one is the elastic properties so the young models and one is the temperature so you could find the DNA in this shape here if it is very short, so if it is shorter, much shorter than the persistence length, or if the DNA is made up of a very, very stiff material, or if you are looking at DNA at, at low, uh, zero temperature. And as you increase the temperature, you increase the, uh, actually the, the thermal energy at disposal, so the DNA might look something like this, or if, if the, the elastic properties are Average, then it can also look like this. Or if you are looking DNA on longer length scale than the persistence length, then it will look like this. And the DNA will look something like this if it is very large <coughs> or very flexible, or if you are at very high temperature. And so, how to to uh, characterize this all this behavior here? It's it's bound here into the persistence length. The persistence length is you can imagine this is the stick that you can use to describe the contour of the DNA. And this persistence length is the elastic modulus that you see here, the temperature. There are the three parameters are um, related with this uh, equation here. And uh, where is uh, DNA? Well, DNA is exactly uh, between, uh, if we are looking at length scale, we can, see, we can have DNA between one and maybe 100 microns. So, uh, the persistence length is 50 nanometers, so we can study the DNA for values of length scales which are m uh, smaller, much smaller than the persistence length, and scales that are much, much larger. The elastic properties are just something also between very hard material and very soft material is 10 to the 8 Pascal. And the temperature, of course, we cannot change it too much, is something like 300 Kelvin. So it's a very interesting. Uh, um, polymer for doing polymer physics because you can go and study it uh, from the very stiff behavior to the average to the semi-flexible behavior to the very flexible behavior and what is interesting from the f uh, physics uh, uh, point of view polymers are just one kind of second order phase transitions uh, that you see and are characterized by the two uh, important parameters the uh, the dimension of the space in which they are embedded and the dimension of the order parameter. In this case, is uh, n equal 3 and, and uh, whatever equals 0, n equals 0, d equal 3. And, and this was identified by the gen to describe uh, polymer. And what polymer physicists do is actually to test scaling law like this one. So the size of the polymer should scale with the length to some kind of exponent, and this exponent will depend upon the, uh, upon the dimension of the space. So I will write it this uh, uh, here just to, you know, to do like the big physicists that were in this room here. So I have also the honor to write on the same table that Abdul Salam was writing, you know, so. <laughs> okay, so, uh, uh, so uh, then there is topology. This is why, why DNA is interesting for us. So we can have DNA in very different topologies, so we can have it linear, 
circular or not, it, which makes them very interesting to study. And so when you are looking at DNA, so DNA is actually two curves which are linked together, like this is a linear DNA, or you can have it, uh, you can have it circular like this one, so to have a circular topology, or if you like also you can have it uh, as a knotted as a knotted uh, uh, topology. So you, you can have all three possible interesting topology that you can make up with a wire. Uh, the other stuff which is really interesting for, for physics is the linking number. So it tells you how many times the uh, DNA strands are going around to each other it is related to magnetism. And here you see uh, Biosavar law that allows you to calculate, if I give you a current, it allows you to calculate around any curve the magnetic field. But if you integrate along the green line the magnetic field, this is using Ampere's law, then you get this relationship. And when you plug the Biosavar in here, you get out actually the, the linking number. Uh, you get out these quantities, which is called actually the Gauss integral. And you see here, if I have two currents loop and I'm integrating three times around the electric field, this integral is equal six and tells me how many times these two curves are linked one to each other. The other point is, which is interesting is, of course, cellular division. You see it here, I show it because often, you know, physicists never saw in their life a, 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 a so well, never saw in their life a cell division, and, and, and so, of course, it doesn't work. Okay, and so the, the, this chromosome will, you see this big mess here in the, in, in the middle, and where the DNA chromo, the chromosome are duplicated, and there they are pulled apart by the, the motors, and by, for doing this, I mean, you can imagine that there, there are tons of crossings, and so these crossings have to be solved so that you can separate DNA, and then we have to rely on the topoisomerase that we were listening to this morning, at least from Eric, about this. So this is an interesting question, how to entangle DNA and how uh, uh, topoisomerase, for example, works. And the other very interesting stuff is this, uh, the, this is the nucleus of a, 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 a human cell, if I'm not uh, uh, wrong, and, and teach chromosome. It's colored here uh, in a very clever way by biologists, biochemists with a different color. And each chromosome, it is, uh, it is confined into a chromosomal domain. So the DNA in the nucleus, when it is not during the uh, division, is all mixed up in, in one single big chunk. But each, uh, each uh, chromosome is uh, perfectly separated. And so how do we understand this from the physical point of view? Also, it's a very interesting problem. And when it divides, you, you see the, the chromosome just coming out. So they, uh, and then they will go back to this very, very compact form. And so for uh, in, um, understanding all these kind of problems, it's uh, important, at least from what we can do as a physicist, to, to see the relationship between the topology, between the elastic properties of the DNA, uh, and, and the polymer properties of DNA as an elastic wire. And so what we are studying actually uh, are just a small part that the cell uses for, for the, uh, from the DNA. You know, the cells uses uh, the sequence, the elastic properties, topological properties, statistical properties, and many, many, many other properties in order to uh, uh, properly function. Uh, but what we are studying in my laboratory are just this limited to these three points here that I will speak about. So how do we do this? Well, we, we take DNA, we Im image this by atomic force microscope, and then we, uh, uh, we trace the DNA, and then we can calculate all the properties that you uh, want to uh, study uh, uh, using this data. So this is the typical experiments. We take a DNA, we uh, put it on a, on a very flat uh, surface like you see here. This is in a two-dimensional configuration. And then we, we dry the sample, uh, and then we come with the atomic force microscope that you see here. We can do the imaging of the DNA and, and get the, the the, the contour, here you see for a very small, uh, for a very small uh, DNA, and then we trace it 
like this with some program, and then I'm saying that, oh, well, at, at this exact point, we are as good as any uh, th theorist. Once we have the coordinates of the, of the uh, DNA molecule, we can calculate any quantities. And so th this is the, the, the interesting part. And what is also interesting is by using the atomic force microscope, you, you don't just get the average value of quantities. You get the value for each single molecule that you can then, at the end, average or you can look at the distribution, which is actually an additional information that we can deliver uh, we using this technique here. And so, uh, as you know, a theoretician will just first calculate the, the, what is the distribution for, for a, I don't know, a polymer, for certain properties of the polymer, and then calculate the average value that is measured by the experiments. And so we, have, we are one step a little bit more in detail, we can uh, get the distribution and then compare them with the predictions of the, of, the, uh, of, of the theory. So these are the different topology we are studying. And so the, the, the position of, of, of the DNA on the surface is two-dimensional because the attraction is, is weak. And, and, and as you can see here, the DNA then goes down. It is in a pure, actually, uh, two-dimensional um, two-dimensional uh, 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 configuration. Here you see uh, molecules which are imaged in, in solution, and you see that they can really move on, on the surface. You, you see here, we just by a trick, we had an intercalant, and then the DNA just uh, supercoiled, positively supercoiled on itself, uh, and so it, the function uh, or the idea of this experiment is to show that actually DNA is, can move around on the surface and, and, and it can be, you know, there can be some, you know, interaction uh, 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 with proteins and stuff like this. So it's really uh, alive on the surface and then when we dry it, then it, it will be, it will be just uh, uh, <clears throat> it will just uh, uh, take the conformation that it has. So it can relax in two dimension. So we, what, we go to, uh, what we want to do is, to, of course, to uh, uh, look at this, uh, uh, at this uh, scaling law. So how do we do? So we take the traced molecule. You see here a linear molecule. We choose uh, a, in this molecule a given contour length, like you see here in green. And then we calculate the end-to-end -end distance. And we do it this for many, many positions on the, on the molecule, and we get out for a given contour length, we get out the average end-to-end -end distance, and then we plot this in a double logarithmic scale, as you can see here, just to test the power laws, and then we can get out, as you can see here, the critical exponents for, for the end-to-end uh, uh, -end distance as a function of the length of the molecule. The other quantities that we can actually study is the radius of gyration that it will also scale la, la, like, the, like the length of, of, the, of the molecule. Or what we can also do is to study the, the directional correlation along, uh, uh, function along the molecule. So if you take this vector here and the same tangent vector at a distance s, uh, what we are looking is the angle, the average angle that they will do. And so if the molecule is stiff, this angle it will be zero. Is it flexible? The average would be just uh, whatever it is. It will be zero. And, 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 and this function decays ex exponentially with, the, with, the, uh, with distance along the molecule. And, and, the, uh, and, and the decay constant is just a persistence length. From this, we get out, actually, the elastic properties of the DNA by, by, by fitting this function. So this is the other quantity that, that, that we can uh, uh, determine from the, from the experiments. And then the third information, or the fourth information we can get is just the shape parameters. Since we are looking at the uh, uh, single molecule, so we, we can get out shape parameters like you can see here, just the asphericity, which is, uh, you know, if we, if we uh, uh, just fit, uh, if, if we fit a, a ellipse uh, al uh, along the, the DNA we, uh, molecule we are looking, the asphericity, 
tell us if the molecule is more elongated or circular. So the, the sphericity is something like the, the, the big axis of the, of, of the uh, ellipse over the, the sum of two, of the two. So if the molecule is circular, the, the sphericity is just zero. If it is elongated like this, it will be one. And on the opposite, the anisotropy is just the minor axis over the uh, larger uh, axis. And this is exactly the, the opposite, uh, something like this. And these are shape parameters that, that we can uh, determine uh, from, from our data. Let's just look now at some data. Uh, are No, no, no. Some Polish guy or? <laughs> yeah, okay. So, <laughs> well, maybe. Ah, okay. Sorry. <laughs> uh, I like the moon, but I'm not that far. So, okay. So, uh, and uh, so here now. So, the, this is DNA now, circular DNA, which is nicked. So, it is relaxed. It has no super calling of different length. And you see already what is happening when it is very short. It, it adopts a, a, a circular uh, uh, behavior, just like a circle. And as it gets longer and longer, it looks more and more inflexible. But actually, the properties doesn't change. It's always the same uh, temperature. It's always the same uh, elastic modulus. It's just the, what I was telling you. If you are looking DNA on very short length scale, it looks stiff. And if you are looking at very long length scale, it will look, it will look uh, Flexible and the same if, if you take a train track and you are looking the train track in, in, in Trieste, it looks like this, and you are in Paris, it will look like this. And so, uh, on short length scale, it's absolutely stiff. You could never imagine that you take a track and then bend it out, up to Paris, and this is exactly what is happening here. So, it's just a question of length scales in this case. And so, for this molecule, we just determined the the, the, the uh, radius of gyration and, and, and plot it against the length of the plasmid. And you see these are the, the data point. And what you can see exactly here at the beginning, you know the slope, it's one, telling us that, that the, the system it is uh, one dimensional uh, because it's stiff. And then as, as we uh, cross the, the persistence length, then it gets uh, like a flexible two dimensional polymer. And, and, and the exponent, it is just 0 0.75, as the theory tells us. So this is exactly the behavior. We can also study the end-to-end -end distance. Of course, the, the molecule is circular, so it, it, it has a shape like this, as we plot it as a function of the contour length. Here you see for very short DNA up to the, the longest one, so six uh, micrometers that we have. And then we can fit it with this formula that is from 1949, so exactly 67 years ago. And, and um, it was never experimentally verified. And here we can verify this formula. And we can get out the critical exponent here. And we see that as the DNA gets longer and longer, you see that the critical exponent goes about from 1 down to 75, as we expect for for this kind of stuff. And then you can use, for example, scaling. You see perfect, uh, perfect overlap. The other quantity is, of course, the the bond-bond uh, 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 correlation function. Here you see uh, one of these functions for a short DNA. You see that, that uh, for circular DNA, it is symmetric. Because when you are halfway along the molecule, the two vectors are perfectly uh, 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 opposite correlated, so completely uh, negative correlation, and then it goes back, of course, to positive correlation. This is for a, a short DNA, and then you can then try to fit this, for example, with the correlation function of a circle. It's not uh, really possible because this DNA is still a little bit flexible, and so there is kind of, uh, of course, uh, not perfectly anti-correlation here because the, the DNA is flexible. And this is the effect that you can see that when you are using some flexible DNA, you can fit perfectly this uh, the, uh, correlation function for short DNA. May, now, for all the DNAs, you see here the raw data. You see that, that this correlation function first decays exponentially as, a, as I, 
I, I was uh, uh, telling to you with this form here, but then the circularity comes in uh, and, and it has to be anti-correlated, so it gets negative uh, in, in contrast to what this formula says, and then it goes back to, the, to, to one again. And what is interesting, you see here, that uh, as the DNA gets longer and longer, so these are the short DNA, and then gets longer and longer, the anti-correlation uh, at midway along the molecule decreases because it is flexible. So you have the one vector here, the other here. If it's stiff, these are perfectly anti-correlated. If it's long, it's flexible, and so this anti-correlation just decreases. And then uh, Sakawe and uh, Hirofumi Wada just uh, uh, did a theoretical work on it just to interpret and, and calculate this correlation function. And you see here that the, uh, there is a nice uh, overlap between our data for, uh, for a two micron DNA and their theory. And so and in, in this case, they take into account the fact that if the DNA it is in, in two dimension, there is interaction between the strands here. And this influences actually the uh, correlation function uh, 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 for this kind of, of, of DNA. So the other stuff is that we can do is the shape parameter. So you see here short DNA and longer DNA. So the, 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 the DNA was just taken and then rotated to have the major axis all in the same direction so that, that the molecule are uh, all oriented. And you see that if it is short, then there is a hole because the DNA ca cannot, uh, cannot fluctuate, it is stiff. But as it gets longer and longer, of course, this is just filling this, this gap here. And so the shape of the DNA goes from saying from almost circular to something that is more elongated. And this shape was studied uh, together with Erwin Frey in, in, in Munich. Uh, and, uh, and you can see here their simulation you know, for a self-avoiding uh, circular DNA. And somewhere are our points that really uh, stay on the line. And so, you, you know, again, we can say that uh, DNA is a self avoiding walk, and that the interactions, when we are in two dimensions, uh, that takes place inside here and determine, influences the, the uh, shape. The other question we were discussing and just uh, mentioning is the fact that DNA it is actually in a very, very crowded uh, environment. And so uh, we went up to study DNA in, in high concentration. So this is the diluted case, and this is the case where we put down a circular DNA of 1,400 nanometers about in very concentrated solution. And you can see that here the shape are really interesting, but, but when it is concentrated, we have some animals appearing inside here. Uh, and these are just due to, to the fact that the DNA, which is around, just makes a pressure on, on, on the molecule, which is uh, in, in, uh, in, in the solution, so to speak. And so we actually, with one sample, we have three different type of confined uh, uh, geometries. One geometry is this one, when the molecule is confined by the other flexible molecule around. And then we have the geometry that, that you probably somewhere you see a molecule inside another one. Uh, we, we have the geometry of a molecule which is inside a kind of, of circular confinement. And then we, we have the one which is outside that feels the pressure from the inside. And so we have three different kind of, of uh, geometries that can be studied with one, uh, with one uh, sample. And here you see the, the, the case, for example, for, for the molecule which is inside, which adopts a shape which is a cross, croissant-like, because this seems to be the one that is more uh, uh, probable, the one that has a, a lower energy. And then we, we took all these molecules and then calculated, for example, the bond-bond correlation function. And then you see here we have a still another type of bond-bond correlation function. It decays, of course, at the beginning exponential because the molecule is just fluctuating. But then it comes up again around the halfway because the molecule goes around in with this shape. And this makes that the uh, correlation function comes up again uh, slightly positive at midway. And then the PhD student, Guillaume, just did some simulation 
to, to calculate uh, this uh, uh, numerically, this function, and then it could show that if it puts around a, a perfect circular molecule, then it can explain exactly what we measure. But this is just what we find out. So we, we have some uh, uh, now hints how uh, DNA molecule behave in, in concentrated solution. Of course, unfortunately, it's only in two dimension, and, and, uh, and the DNA is actually in three dimensions. But what Sakawe uh, did after the work he did with us is that uh, what, what he understood in, on t in two dimension, he could then extend his theory in three dimension, which is now a theory that awaits, of course, uh, uh, with, of course, confirmation by experiments. Uh, but this is the way we, we can work. OK. Uh, and of course, also, uh, when you are looking at, at the bond-bond correlation function, you see this effect that if the molecule is, is flexible, the persistence length is, is shorter, uh, and then the decay is much faster. So, so if you have the concentrated molecule, which is inside here, it looks more flexible, but it is not more flexible from the point of view of, of the uh, elastic modulus. It's just the fact that by the pressure, this makes loop the molecule more flexible. And if you are looking at the molecule which is outside, this molecule looks more stiffer uh, because it just has the internal pressure, and then the decay uh, function the correlation function decays much slower because the effective persistence length is higher. The same stuff, you can see it with the end-to-end -end distance. You see here the reference DNA, circular DNA in dilute uh, uh, solution. And then if you are looking inside the one molecule, so the, 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 of course the end-to-end -end distance has to, to become shorter because the molecule is, is pressed. If, if you look at the molecule which is confined by the other molecule, will be the green line here. And if you are looking to the molecule which are swollen, so the black one here, then it is much larger. And what we can do, of course, and this is the interesting part, is because uh, 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 polymer in concentrated solution behave like Gaussian, uh, Gaussian uh, um, uh, curves. And, 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 and this means that the critical exponent is 0.5. And so we go from, when it is in dilute solution, we go from 0.75, which is a self-avoiding uh, prediction here. And we go, you see, in, in concentrated solution, we go toward 0.56. We cannot push it down more because it's really difficult to, to, to get a concentrated solutions uh, on the surface. So we try desperately, but you know, if DNA doesn't want, then it doesn't want, of course. Okay. Then, of course, uh, I was inspired by the experiment by Davide, yeah? so <laughs> who is down there, uh, up there, you know, so he's uh, now become a, a master for me. Uh, this kind of experiments, microscopic mac experiments, where he was studying the effect of, of, of concentrated solution of circular uh, uh, polymers uh, by using sparsta in, in this way. You know? And this is the three-dimensional case that we actually would like to do with DNA, but it's not possible. And so I, I thought to redo the experiments at home, you know, but I wanted to do a blind experiment. You know? I didn't want to tell to the person who was eating what, what we, I expect or what I'm studying. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, the, the, if you are taking a linear DNA uh, in concentrated solution, uh, nu is equal. Uh, of course, in, in two dimensions, it looks like if you fill the plane, the, then you have the, the you know, uh, the, you have the fractal dimension of two, and you have nu equal one half, of course. In, in two dimensions, is uh, is trivial and my experiment is trivial. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> this is the essence. So, so this we should do, of course, three-dimensional experiments. These were done, of course, uh, in 1985 or 86. Dejan did with his group uh, some experiment in using neutron scattering uh, in concentrated linear DNA, and, and, and uh, this was a famous experiment. It's a beautiful paper in macromolecules using deuterated 
a linear uh, chains of peer, uh, DNA uh, of uh, polymer polystyrene diluted in a, in a sea of undeterrated, and they could, of course, study exactly this. Uh, but on, of course, he got the Nobel Prize, and, and I, I got the IG Nobel, you know. So, <laughs> so <laughs> with Andre, we were nominated, you know, for the spaghetti experiment, the one on not, you know. So we didn't get it, unfortunately, so it was a big deception. Okay, so inspired by this, so what I did, I, I prepared this pasta, and then I gave it to my son, you know. Uh, but he was very, very cautious to eat. But now, you see the effect of the entanglement? So he, he's well educated. But he's, uh, you see the, the circular DNA, you, you get a bunch of DNA coming up because the, because the pasta it is really entangled, you know. And, and uh, he's very hungry. And, and, uh, and sometimes it goes better, you know, and sometimes you you get really huge uh, quantities. Of course, uh, it was uh, not too good way of, of doing it, so some of them were, were just breaking. So it took me a lot of time to convince him to eat it because he was really fearing I was trying to do some joke on him, you know, but, uh, you know, so, okay. So, uh, now, uh, um, the best way of doing, of course, uh, uh, um, effect of confinement, it would be if also you could actually uh, uh, have a, a well-defined geometry to, to do this uh, experiment. So uh, with, um, uh, uh, with, with Christian and, and Enzo, we started some experiment, uh, and uh, um, Sandro Japariz, my PhD, was doing the actual experiment. So if you are taking the positive, like I, I, uh, we are doing uh, DNA, uh, on a surface in two dimension, so it, it, it will just be uh, squeezed down in two dimension. There is no effect of actually of confinement because it, it's in two dimension, and so the DNA will just spread out something like this, and you can explain exactly how it behaves if you take kind of like bubble uh, bubble theory, and then uh, so okay, no, nothing special. But if you are confining it, uh, for example exactly in, in, in one, some kind of one-dimensional slit, then of course uh, we will see some changes. So if the, the, the size of the slit is much bigger than the persistence length, then if the DNA is short, it will be uh, circular. If it is long, it will be uh, looking like this, and, and, the, and, and, and the anisotropy, it will, uh, will be 0.29, so with what is expected. If, of course, the slit is, is smaller, comparable to the persistence length or, or to some size of the polymer. If it's short, of course, it's still circular. The, the anisotropy is one, but as it gets bigger and bigger, you expect a decrease in, into the anisotropy to 0.2. And so we did some experiments uh, about this by, by using slit and, and then uh, 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 putting uh, this on, on the surface and, and let DNA go inside these slits uh, on, the, on our sample uh, holder, so to speak. And then afterwards, we take away everything. We dry the, 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 the sample, and then we study the molecules that, are, that were inside the, the slit, uh, something like this. And here you see some examples of DNA of different length. This is outside the slit, and at the, as it gets inside, uh, these are 10 micron slits, so these are much, much bigger than the, than the size of the, of, of, of the molecule, and these are 600 nanometers, which are slits which are about the, the size of the, of, the, uh, of the DNA. And so the, the, the summary of this uh, is not a joke, but uh, I, I, you have just to look at two, at two points here. So if... If the, 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 this is a long DNA, which is 8.5 kilo base pairs, which has a ratio of generation of something of 250 nanometers, if it is outside, so if it is uh, without constraint, the anisotropy, you see it, it's 0.29 as expected from theory, and as you go inside small slits, 
then you see that it's decreasing. So we see this effect of uh, the molecule getting elongated. Of course, we should do it um, also with much longer DNA, but the problem, DNA don't want to get in there. So I, I'm trying to, to do uh, uh, some experiments to get more uh, DNA inside, longer DNA, but it's really difficult. Now, of course, there are experiments that are done uh, using, uh, using optical methods, which uh, allows to, to do the confinement. Uh, very well, but then the resolution is much less because you have the resolution of the optical microscope and so you have maybe, I don't know, 500 nanometers, something like this. Instead here, we have a very high resolution so we could get uh, very, very detailed information actually about uh, how the DNA behaves, but the, uh, of course the disadvantage is that uh, at the moment we cannot really go more into into this problem. And then with uh, Enzo and Christian, or Christian and Enzo, th these are the experimental uh, curves, and, and these are the, the simulated curve. And so we see, so the, the, the black curve is the control, the, the red one, it is the, the, the big slits, uh, and the blue one is the small slits. So you see some changes of the bond bond <coughs> correlation function here. Uh, uh, exactly at uh, halfway along the molecule, and with their simulation, they could explain this curve here and the effect. So it looks like the, the molecule, because it is, of course, into the slit, there is more uh, correlation between, between, the, between the, the tangent vectors. So if, if you have a, a molecule like this, of course, this one, it is more anti-correlated with, with this guy halfway or, or with the other one. But if the molecule it is flexible like this, well, there is less anti-correlation, you know. And so this can be seen here in, into this experiment and with the, with the simulation. So now, uh, what did we also discover? By, by doing this kind of experiment is that when we, these were nicked molecules because we don't want to have a, a super calling coming, coming in and, and complicated the problem. And what we saw that when, when we are inside the slits, we saw this air pin forming here al al along the molecule, this kind of effect when the molecules are inside. And we could show with Sandro that this, the number of air pin just correspond to the number of, of nicking site on, on the molecule. And we could do the experiment, nick on purpose the molecule, and then see that this kind of nicking appears. And this is, for, I think, I hope, uh, for the biological point of view, it's an interesting information. It means that when DNA is in concentrated solution, nicking site uh, uh, are in this conformation, and then, of course, this will prevent the reading of the DNA by this site. So, one question that we have, uh, is this used by the cell to, to control, for example, gene, uh, uh, genes, to regulate genes? You introduce a nick, you stop the, 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 the transcription. You, you take it away, well, you, you, you have it again free. So this could be uh, one, one mechanism of, uh, of uh, controlling gene. But of course, uh, maybe the biologist here, for example, Lynn, might, uh, oh no, she says, oh no, don't come with this theory, you know. <laughs> you? Super calling, yes. But, uh, you know, if you have much longer DNA, then, uh, then because of the constraints that you can sustain still super coiling, you know, and have nicks, I, I don't know, maybe. Okay, okay. The, the other stuff I, I, I would like to, to show you is, is the, the fact that if you want to, to, to uh, transcript and read DNA, you, you have to open the DNA so that you get access to, to the starting point of, of, the, of the gene and reading the DNA. Uh, but of course, DNA, uh, 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 denatures at 70 uh, degrees C. So uh, at uh, room temperature or, or 37 degree, our DNA will never open. So it will never be transcribed, will never be, and we will be dead. You know? so, so, so nature did a mistake in this case. You know, 
uh, because life is at 37 degrees and, and DNA doesn't open. Doesn't open. So how how the, uh, the nature solve this problem is is to introduce actually uh, supercoiling. And so uh, uh, if we are taking a, a supercoiled a supercoiled DNA means that uh, this uh, uh, before closing the DNA the the enzymes take away actually twist so it it has a, a linking number which is uh, smaller than the natural uh, linking number that would be given just for the, from the twist, you know. And so uh, if you are taking a, a molecule, close it, it so you can, uh, this is the, the, the ideal form with eight, actually a link of eight, but before closing it, you take away one turn, and then you have an underwound DNA uh, molecule. And, but the molecule is not happy, because the, you know there is torsion on the molecule, and so how the distortion is relaxed it is by using the uh, the the kala 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 whatever uh, yeah. <laughs> theorem you know from 1959 uh, was published in French in a Romanian uh, 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 journal something like this, uh, and uh, and so it it has the choice to relax this, uh, this uh, torsion into, into bending by increasing the, the right, so, uh, uh, so making the right actually negative, or the other way is to open a bubble. You know, so you can open a bubble like this, and so the rest of the DNA is happy, and you have a bubble. And so in this way, you, you can actually open DNA, and this is why actually DNA is negatively supercoiled. It is underwound, so that uh, the probability to open is just increased. Uh, and so the opening temperature actually goes from 70 degrees down to 37 or whatever it is needed. Of course, there are tons of, of, of proteins, tons of, of, of uh, whatever phenomena that, that uh, allows the, the, the cell to, to, to open the, the, the beginning of, of the gene and stuff like this. This is just one physical part. But of course, uh, there are tons of other stuff which are uh, you know, also playing a role. Just to show you this, uh, we are taking negatively coiled, uh, super coiled DNA here. We add uh, an intercalant, so we change the twist. The linking number is constant. We change the twist, and, and the right goes then, uh, as we add the intercalant, the right goes from negative, goes to zero. In this case here, it's the same DNA. Uh, just with uh, the intercalant, we are just changing the twist from here to here. We are just uh, actually... Uh, uh, um, you know, lowering the twist, and so the 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 the, the right has to go up, and as we add more and more, then the 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 DNA gets uh, positively supercoiled in this case. So do you see this effect, uh, and the consequence of, of of actually underwinding DNA is that bubbles can open. So you can test yourself. You take a rope, multi-filament rope. You are just turning against the 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 the, uh, um, you know, the helical uh, structure of the rope, and then you, you can app, uh, open DNA. And so what we did, we deposited DNA uh, on the surface, and then we, we looked at, at, at this DNA, and we saw that there are actually bubbles that open into, into the DNA. And so what we did, we correlated the length of this, uh, of this uh, uh, bubble with actually the right of, of the molecule. So, and the right is just given by the number of crossings that it has. If it has a lot of crossings, the, the right is, is, is large, is negative, and so the, the, the twist can, can, be, uh, can be again to the standard value. If the right is lower, then the molecule relaxes the stress by opening the, the bubble. And, and then we, we take the, the actual the bubble size here, as a function of the remaining crossings. So these are molecules with a little, you know, a little uh, right, and the bubble is big, and there are molecules which are higher right and a smaller bubble. And what you see here, the red line, is the red line uh, by taking account only topological, uh, um, topological uh, 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 
values, it means twist uh, and write and the linking number. And, and the bubble uh, size is smaller of about 12.5 nanometers in this case here on av for all of this. Uh, and this is just due to the fact that part of the stress of the molecule can be relaxed into the torsion of, of the DNA. And so Ralph Metzler just did a, 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 a theory about it. This part is here is just geometry, topology. So this is the red line. And this part here is 12.5 nanometers. Uh, and uh, the parameters that there are here are just parameters that we got from, from the literature. People measuring the torsional uh, module of the DNA, people that measure the, the, the in principle, the, 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 the some, uh, yeah, this is the length of the, of, of, for example, single-stranded DNA, double-stranded DNA, and so on and so forth. And this gives you exactly 12 uh, nanometers. So there are no, we, we didn't choose any parameter. We just put it in there, uh, and the theoretical curve goes straight to, to our data. OK. So, but of course, for opening, you have to introduce into the, into the bubble, uh, into the DNA, some weak points. So if you want to break something, just put a weak point in there, and then you can break it. So, and, and DNA does it like this by taking, by taking a series of weak uh, uh, base pairs so that it will open at a given place. Because if you're putting torsion of the molecule, it can open anywhere. But you don't want to open anywhere, so you need a place where there is a weak point. And so this is done like this. And you can see here, we just took the same DNA as before. We just uh, dimerized it, so we have two of them. And you see that there are two bubbles in there. So uh, probably uh, at this place here, there, there, there is a lot of TA, TA, TA sequence, so that is weak, and then it will open exactly at this place here. Okay, so this is what we, 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 uh, we can do. And so how, how does the, then the cell react as the temperature goes up? Since if you increase the thermal energy, you will increase the, the opening probability. And, and, and how is it reacting? Well, it's reacting by reducing the, the, the delta LK. And here you see some measurement we did on E. coli and the DNA from E. coli. We, we grew DNA, uh, the bacteria at different temperature and then measured the, the, the uh, superhelical density. And you see that this is negative, the superhelical density. And as we increase the temperature, this goes down. Because DNA opens here. Uh, uh, more easily because of the higher temperature than here, so you need less underwinding to open, the open DNA. Yeah, and so you have the confirmation here. And now there is just something for Dorothy, which is just there in the back. She was showing these beautiful images of uh, minimal surfaces on nuts. So I have one here for you. This is a 4-1 nut with a soap bubble in there. And so you see the, 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 the surface here. And then in in the center is there is a tetrahedral uh, structure, you know. So where the, you know, the 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 four, uh, the four uh, uh, surfaces meet. Uh, if you're doing this with a trifoil knot, you will have just three, three lines coming. And then I could not go up higher to do the experiment, but uh, uh, so you know, I did the experiment. You do the theory, and uh, we get married, and we'll be happy. Oh, oh, no, sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry. OK, so th this is for thanking the people that were working on this project. And uh, thank you for your attention. Thank you.